A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let's get to work. Here we go. What's up people, Mr. Toolbox here, and today we're gonna to talk about creating a new project in Amazon's Lumberyard Editor. A topic you wouldn't expect to take a whole video, but rest assured it will. It's not that it's technically difficult to do, it's just when you're going through it for the first time, there are a number of places you can get caught out, a ton of places that may generate some errors that will be impenetrable to most people. So we're going to take our time, do this right, and I'll try to call out where I've run into errors in the past and how we can solve that stuff. So let's get cracking. I want to cover our bases before we even consider creating a new project. So to do that, I want to open the Setup Assistant. I'll let that launch. And what I want to do is here on this main Getting Started screen, make sure you've got these top three ticked. Run your game project, run the editor and tools, and compile the game code. That's going to make sure you have enough installed to run the editor and also to compile new projects. So I was making this video earlier today and didn't have one of the compilation prerequisites installed and ran into a ton of errors. So just do yourself a favor, jump into the setup assistant. You don't have to run anything if this all comes back clear, but check here, make sure everything has some green checks over here to the left. In the install SDK section, uh, actually in the install software section, I was missing the Visual Studio update that caused no end of headaches, and it's not part of the default installation, so do be careful there. Again, just jump into the Setup Assistant. Make sure you've got enough installed to get through these first three steps. Once you've done that, we can move on safely. Once we've checked for our prerequisites, we can create the new project. So we will launch the Project Configurator, and we'll be presented with this screen here. We'll go ahead and click Create New. Now it won't accept any typing up front. You have to actually click in this name field. We'll call this example project. Be careful here, you can only use letters and numbers. You can't use any underscores, white space, stuff like that. And then do take note of this message down here. To my mind, it should be in size 100 font because it is crucial to getting things to work. Um, you do need to run a couple of commands from the command prompt, and we'll talk about them later, but they are right here for your convenience. Once you've got your name in there, go ahead, click Create Project, and you'll see it appear in the list. Once you've got the project created, half the battle is done, but what we need to do is select it out here in the Select a Project window, and then click Set as Default. If you fail to do that, and then you launch the Lumberyard Editor, it's going to launch into the project that's already selected in here. In my case, it would have been the Samples Project. But until you set that as default, you won't actually launch the editor into that project. So be sure to do that. There's one particularly gnarly gotcha I want to call out right here. You'll notice I have a project that's just called A1. <clears throat> if I open up my Lumberyard folder, you'll see here's the project. What I'm going to do is in the project configurator, I'll click that A1, set it as default, and I'm going to close it. If while that's closed, I go ahead and delete this A1 folder and then try to launch the project configurator again, it doesn't do anything. You don't get any feedback as to what's wrong. It just won't do anything. Now there is a way if you kind of manually spelunk the XML, you can actually change the default project, uh, but it can really throw you off. So what I'm gonna do is just restore that folder. And then with the directory back in place, if I open up the project configurator, it works like a charm. Just be on the lookout. If you delete what's set as the default project, you're gonna run into some issues and you're either gonna have to restore that if you're lucky enough to have it still in your recycle bin, or you're gonna have to manually edit that XML to point it to a project that does exist. While we're on the topic of deleting projects, uh, one other point. In the root of your dev folder, you'll see folders that correspond to your projects. 
So A1, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. If you're trying to wipe out a project in its entirety, go ahead, go into the code folder. You'll also find a folder that points to your project here as well. So be sure to delete that one too. Now that I've got that deleted, I'm going to jump back into the project configurator and just make sure the example project is set as default. We're all good there. So if I close this and open it up, now that I've deleted both of those A1 folders, project configurator still works and you see A1 is no longer listed. One last bit of housekeeping you can do in the project configurator is to enable and disable gems, which are basically just packages of convenience files. So if you click enable gems on your package, you get a pretty nice list. Um, this seems to be expanding at a pretty good clip. Some of the stuff like the camera, uh, let's see, physics and the UI stuff is ticked by default. You want to leave those alone. If you're curious what any of them do, if you hover over kind of the white space to the right or just below it, you can actually click and it'll give you a pretty good description. So which of these you tick is going to depend on what you want the project to do. When we set up our Doom Marina, I'll go ahead, walk through this and tick the ones that I'm going to want. But give these a look. You can generally click and set those at any time, even if you've been working with the project. But as it says up at the top, Changing them or the settings will require that you rebuild the project. So make a point to stop in here and tick the ones you know you're going to need before you get rolling. Once you've gone through and selected those, you can head back to projects or you can just close this window entirely. The next thing we're going to need to do is to configure and build the project. So you'll need to pop open a command prompt. If you're on Windows 10, you can just type in CMD down in the Cortana window. You can click start run on Windows 7 or 8 and do the same thing. I've got one here. First thing you're going to want to do is just change directory CD into your lumberyard folder. Mine's in program files lumberyard and then go into the version folder 150 and then one directory deeper into dev. So this is where the root of all your projects are. And this is where you need to run these commands. And you do it here because the lumber lmbr underscore waf batch file is located in this directory. So the first thing we need to do is to run configure. So we're going to type lumber waf dot bat space configure. We'll press enter. And this is going to take some time. So we'll let it run in the background. You'll notice even in the best of cases, you probably see some yellow or even some red lines come across. I'm going to get a sea of red here because I don't have the Android SDK or the Android build tools installed. I am not looking to build for Android, so it's okay. But you are going to want to take a look at the output when this wraps up just to make sure it didn't fail on anything fatal, anything Windows or PC related, if that's what you're building for. And uh, just take a look through that output, make sure everything looks kosher and then we will move on to the next step. So like I said, a sea of red, but nothing that causes me any real heartburn. So we're gonna move on to the uh, build step. So what we'll need to do is again, run the lumber waff. This one is much more difficult to remember, but it is build underscore win x64 profile space dash p space game. We'll press enter and again it's going to run through. Be on the lookout for major fatal warnings in red. This one will take a while to complete as well even on a really beefy system so be patient let it run through until it's done. This build stage is a little bit more forgiving in that at the end it kind of tells you if it finished successfully or unsuccessfully. So be on the lookout for the last line because you could get kind of out in the weeds if you're watching all of the yellow and sometimes red go by. When you've gotten this far, you can go ahead and close the command prompt. You don't need that anymore. That's all you really need to do on a fundamental level to get the editor to work. So if we launch the editor now, we should jump into the example project that we've created. 
The first time you run, you'll see the assets process. It'll take a little bit longer than it normally does uh, once you've been working with the project for a while. So you'll have to be a little patient while that happens. But that is all you need to do to get a new project rolling. There's some other stuff I'm going to explain next for convenience sake or for working with audio, um, organizational type stuff. It's not essential, it's not required, but I think it'll make life easier and it's something I like to do when I set up a new project with Lumberyard. There we go, looks like it worked. It's really the easiest way to check to make sure everything's on the up and up. If it doesn't, you'll probably get an editor cannot launch error message. It'll tell you to look in the editor logs, which are a tilde separated text file and a, a nightmare to parse. I hope that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, I'd recommend starting with checking to make sure you have the requisite build tools installed. If that Visual Studio Update 4 is missing, you'll run into that problem. So start there. The Lumberyard forums do have some pretty good pointers on how to get around that message and at least how to parse those logs to find out what may be happening. So that's probably your next step. I'm going to close the editor for now because I want to do a little bit more housekeeping before I start work with the project. So let me do that. And I'm going to open Windows Explorer and jump into my Lumberyard directory. We'll jump into 1.5, into dev, into the example project, and we'll see a pretty bare bones folder structure. I wanna add on to this to keep things organized in a way that suits the way I like to work. It's gonna require that I create a bunch of folders. I'll go ahead and do that now. First is animations. That's where I'll stash all the animations we create. That one may be a little controversial, but I like to have a directory for my flow graphs that I export, and I just keep them in there. One for levels. One for materials. One for any custom objects I create. One for prefabs. One for slices, which are component entities that you kind of wrap up into copyable slices that you can dot around in your level. So I like to keep all of those in a folder as well. One for sound. This one's special. It needs a pair of subdirectories to work properly. The first is WYs. And the second is WYs underscore project. So my WProj folder or file is going to go in this folder here, and the sound banks themselves will build into the WYs folder. Folder for textures. And last, one for UI canvases. So this way, when I open up my project folder, I know everything has a home. It's a little bit tidier because when you click export or you click save out in the Lumberyard editor, it's gonna wanna tend to dump things just in your project folder and it can get messy fast. So having these created before you get going will save you a little bit of headache. With everything in its right place, as Tom York would say, we can close that and open up the editor. Should go a little bit quicker this time since we've already opened it. So yeah, I know I fast forwarded, but it was quicker on my end. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new level. We'll call the level example level. And we'll leave everything at default.
Cool. There we are. A little bit of housekeeping to do on a brand new level is in the roll-up bar, jump over to the layers. And then let's just create a couple layers to keep things sane over here. First, we'll call this one audio. We can leave all the rest at default. The next we'll call geometry. Again, default for everything. Next we've got one for lighting. One for logic that'll house our flow graphs. And last for the UI. So I like to do this just to keep audio stuff in the audio layer, keep it out of my main view. Geometry that'll hold all the brushes, the uh, designer objects, stuff that we create as we're going along. Lighting just keeps things sane because you can dot so many lights around a level. Logic, just having the flow graphs easily accessible is kind of nice because they can tend to get scattered in with the rest of your objects. And then the UI stuff we will get to when we start overlaying canvases on our view. With those layers in place, let me go ahead and save. And I'm actually going to close the editor and do one last bit of housekeeping, and that is to launch WYs. Because this is a new project, I need to make a new project here in WYs as well. So I'll click new, click the dots off to the right of location, and then I'm going to browse into that sounds WYs project folder we created. So I'll head to program files, lumberyard 1.5 dev, find my example project into sound WYs project. We'll hit select folder there. We'll just name this the same as the project. We'll name it example project. We will click OK. Once the project loads, there's one thing to do here, and that is to reconfigure the output of the WYS project. So we're going to click project. We'll go into project settings. Click the sound banks tab. And then we want to change this sound bank folder here. So click those double or triple dots. I'm going to go back to sound and select the WYS folder. That's where we want the sound banks to output to. So with that in place, we'll click OK. Back up to project. We'll save it. And we'll close. So that's it, done and dusted. It takes some getting used to. It's, as you've seen from this video, not super complicated, but there's kind of a lot of moving parts. And if, you've come, if you're coming from a different editor like Unity or Unreal, where you just click new and start working, um, it can be kind of intimidating to get something set up properly. The error messages you get, if you're lucky enough to get them when things go wrong, can be pretty obtuse, or you may just not see anything at all. But I'm hoping this video will kind of give you the on-rails version of how you go from zero to ready-to-use project in the straightest line. Some of that stuff towards the end is just kind of housekeeping. I think doing it up front makes sense. Kind of start yourself on an even keel, and then the day you go to use WYs to create sound banks, you don't have to worry about jumping back in, creating folders for your project, stuff like that. You kind of have a good base a good solid template that you create with your project that you know will house the things that you're going to need to use. So anyway, that's it. Let me know if you uh, have any feedback, positive or negative. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.